Well, the monster meeting started off as just a, uh, under Mr. Taylor, a local, mostly religious meeting. And uh, DeFrance was the one who switched it over to something that was more political. Monster meetings were started by my great grandfather, Fabron E. DeFrance. And uh, I have heard and learned about those meetings over the course of my life. So I wanted the opportunity to be here to see and experience what it felt like uh, and understand what it could look like in the future going forward. That's where we are in the future going forward. Monster meetings are back at the YMCA of Greater Indianapolis, a series that dates back decades, focusing on racial reconciliation. Lecture began back in 1904 and has had truly memorable moments since then. have a couple of great guests with us today. Monique Hill is the task force chair for the Monster Meetings. Tony Wise is a voice from the YMCA. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for Thank having you us. To, to share with our viewers what you and I talked about, my favorite midday broadcast are the ones where I learned something. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about this. Yes. Please help our viewers know about the Monster Meetings. If they may know a little bit about them, what a wonderfully rich tradition this has become. Absolutely. So as it was stated, the Monster Meeting started back in 1904 under Thomas E. Taylor, and they were an evangelistic forum. And then when the secretary, the second secretary of the Senate Avenue YMCA, uh, Faber de France, he actually evolved the Monster Meetings into more of a political, social, economic um, forum that dealt with the issues in the black community as well as in the community of Indianapolis and expanded for over uh, uh, 60 years actually and we had uh, famous uh, speakers such as Martin Luther King Jr., yep. Elver, Eleanor Ro Roosevelt and they grew uh, from mediocre size to over a thousand people coming to these uh, forums. So that brings us to now. What's about to happen? What, five days away from now? It's right around the corner. We're really excited. <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> yes, we're excited. We're excited most, I think, about our guest speaker, Elia yes. Shabazz. She's going to be our speaker at the meeting, and I'm looking forward to more than anything, I want to hear her conversation about inter intergenerational leadership development. That's one of the topics that she speaks on. Boy, when you talk about somebody who knows it through the generations, uh, tell us about her life. Her life is woven through the civil rights struggle in India and America. It, it is. Well, of course, she's Malcolm X's daughter one of his daughters and again the conversation about racial equity and social justice discrimination things like that she can speak from a personal perspective on those things so we're looking forward to what she has to say about that and just really getting more young people to hear her her history mm -hmm. and we're really trying to target that group especially because we want them to get comfortable using their voice we all have a voice we want to make sure that they're comfortable, comfortable using their voice. Tony, you talk about the voice, you talk about it being a conversation. Is this, is this a two, three, five-way talk? Is it, is it a lecture and then go home, or is it something that, that starts another conversation that continues? So it will be a lecture at first, and then it will be a moderated conversation with one of our um, YMCA employees that will lead the conversation. And there will be opportunities for the audience to be able to ask questions mm -hmm. um, in the process as well. Take, take me into that room, the task force, when you decided Here's who we're targeting this time. This is who we'd like to come visit our community. How did that conversation go? So it started with our uh, vision statement, which is to empower future leaders through, di through racial reconciliation dialogues um, that inspire, educate, and motivate uh, future leaders. And we wanted to have a speaker that came that represented that. And reading Ilias' uh, bio, it just lined up and we're not only is she coming to speak but we're also recognizing three young seniors that will receive scholarship um, monster meeting scholarship awards and, and recipients and that spoke on racial reconciliation so let's talk about the highs and the where hows and the whens and the where's who's welcome to this five days out now How, can people still be part of it that's a great question. I appreciate that question, too, because we are reaching capacity in person. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we're cautious about COVID still. Sure. So we want to have space for people to move around. And they can still register for virtual. If that registration for face-to-face -face closes, mm -hmm. which is getting close, so people sign up right now at monstermeeting.com. Monstermeeting.org. Dot org, okay. Yes. They can still sign up virtually if they cannot make it in person. Is there a cost to this? It's free to the public. Okay. There's a cost, absolutely, but it's free to the public. Is, is, there, is there a vision of who you'd like to be part of this? Or is this truly like, you know what, anybody who's had a real conversation? Anybody is open to any and everybody, young and old. We do want to target younger people simply because 
that's the next generation. We sure. want to make sure that they're having this conversation, they're using their voices, and they know that they have an opportunity to make a difference. Well, we appreciate the time today, and I know that time's winding short for you guys. You've been planning for this for very, very long, yes. so best of luck with it. We'll check with you on the back end, see yes. how things went, and Wonderful. maybe give our viewers an update here on the Midday Thank News. You, Thank Scott. you so much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you both very much. Still